Either you stand for something or you will fall for anything. And by anything, I mean anything. Because when we don't have a firm stance, a firm belief, firm values, we open ourselves up to any type or form of deception. And that's why it's so vital that we stand for something. What's up everyone, Joshua Washington here. Welcome back to The Mentality of Success. Um, and if you didn't notice in the intro, this week we are talking about values and the importance of values. Now, real quick, I'm gonna, this is a disclaimer here. This is not a political conversation. And I have to give that disclaimer because I am going to be using a political example to discuss values. And I know people get into a, a little bit of a titsy when you start talking politics or anything related to politics. People get antsy. So don't worry, this won't be a political diatribe or, or soapbox. I am simply using this as an example because I think it's important. I think it's important. Here's what I'm talking about. So this week, put my phone on silence here. This week, I, we just so happen to be in the election cycle. It's like the, the primaries, I believe. I don't know much about this stuff, so I'm not the one to come to for expertise on, on this subject. But I believe the primaries are taking place uh, this week. And I got a call last week that I thought was just so, it, it made me laugh out loud. And it's, I'm not going to mention the party because this isn't related to any particular party. I just found it to be the request to be really quite strange and also a little, a tad bit funny, entertaining to me. So I'll tell you what happened. I got a call, right? And the person on the line was like, is this Joshua? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes. I said, Joshua, we want to know that we can count with you on this upcoming election to vote up and down the ballot for this particular party. And my, it hit me you know, when I got that request. <laughs> it kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, first, I don't even know who's like who's really in the running up and down. I know a few names because I've done a better job of keeping up, you know, because I believe you should honor your vote. I've grown to that point. I didn't always feel that way. I'll get into that later. But this person asked me, can we ensure that you're going to vote this particular party up and down the ballot? Now, I didn't get upset, but I wanted to kind of clarify who they were, you know, because I'm an, I'm an independent. I'll just be honest with you all. So my response was, I don't vote based on partisanship. I vote based on the issues and my values. That was my response. <laughs> and this person says, well, sir, thank you for your time. And they hung up. <laughs> That's the part that I found to be funny. It wasn't that they were asking me this question. I found that like th that was the end of the conversation. And it, it blew my mind. Like they didn't, they didn't try to stop and say, well, okay, what questions do you have? Here, here are the people that you may not know about. Here are their beliefs, their platforms that you may not know about. It was just like, wait a minute, you have a mind of your own. Well, never mind. If you, have, if you, if you actually have values, if you actually have, you know, your own thoughts, and you vote, get this. You, you are crazy enough to vote based on the issues and your values. Never mind, we don't want to talk to you. <laughs> You're not the one we want to talk to. And they literally hung up because I told them, hey, I don't vote based on partisanship. I vote based on the issues. And I think that is a very, here's the third thing. At first it was, it, it kind of took me aback and then it made me laugh and then it got very scary. Because that shows us all these people aren't looking for, or I shouldn't say these people. There are a lot of people in these political parties that aren't looking for those of you to know what the issues are, to know where people stand. And that's very dangerous because that means your vote, there's no real life attached to it. There's no real brain or mind attached to it. And this reminded me of where I used to be. Because there used to be a time where I would vote based on, I go back to 2008, and I tell people this all the time, not because something was necessarily wrong with the person. Again, I don't want to make this political, so I'm not going to talk about the actual person. 
I'm going to use their name, but I'm not going to talk about them. But I want to make this point. Back in 2000, I believe seven or eight, I voted for Obama at that time simply, simply because he was black. Like that was the main reason why we had never had a black president want to see that happen. But if you were to ask me what were some of the issues he stood on, what were some of the values, how did you know his outlook on issues align with my values, I would not have been able to answer that question. All I would have been able to tell you was that this person is black. So got my vote. I'm over for every black person up and down the ballot. But here's the question. And again, I told you, this is not about politics. This is about values. Here's the question. If I go into a, a ballot box, a voting booth, that's what I think it's called. I can't go into a ballot box. If I go into a voting booth and I vote solely based on the color of someone's skin, or I like someone solely based on the color of their skin, what makes me different than someone who dislikes me solely based on the color of my skin. What's the difference? The truth is there is no difference. It is of the same ignorance. Whether you think you're doing it for good or whether it's, you know, got a, a sheet over its head with, with, with a point at the, at the top. Like, it doesn't matter. To judge someone by anything other than the character that they present to you is wrong. Or anything other than the values that you carry in the misalignment between the two parties. To judge by anything other than that is wrong. Is wrong. And that's why this topic came up during this particular week. It is so important. If we're going to, have, if we're going to be successful in life, we have to gain and grow some consistency in understanding what our values are. In other words, you need to stand for something. You need to stand for something and be really clear on what those things are. I can't say that I love everyone and I'm here judging or voting for someone just simply because they share the same pigmentation as me. Those values are misaligned. And so here's some questions that I, I want you to consider during this week if you are going to vote or, or just in your life in general, if you're going to be successful. Here are some questions you have to answer. And I want to read these from my notes. The questions you want to answer is what are your top values? I did this exercise a few years ago before I you know, started down this path of the mentality of success. And I wrote down what those values were and I got down to like a top five. And so I encourage you, identify what are your top five values? If a stranger were to come up to you today and say, insert your name, what are your top five values? Would you have to think about them or would you, or would you be able to spout those off quickly? Because you, you have a clear, you have clarity, I should say, on what your values are. That's number one. Stand for something to fall for anything. If you want to stand for something, get clear on what your top values are. Number two. How do your values influence the decisions you make on a daily basis? Because it's one thing to say, I value this. And it's another thing when you walk out and do the opposite. And I pick on Christians for this topic all the time. Because I can't stand someone who says I'm a Christ follower, but none of your life, none of your life. We're not talking like maybe there's a little mistake here, mistake there. Like the high majority of your life does not follow the teachings and the instructions of Christ. So it's important to not only have the values, but to make sure we strive so that those values influence our decision-making ability. So that was number two. Ask yourself this. We're talking about standing for something so that you don't fall for anything. Number two was, how do your values influence the decisions you make on a daily basis? Here's number three. I'm reading from my notes here. Are there any areas of your life in which you're not, your values, you're not living in them? Or you're not living accord, in accordance with your values. And, and this is, I mean, one of the biggest jumps or milestones in my growth was when I sat one night at a, at a darn dead-end road and had to do a life assessment. 
to say, okay, where am I? Where are my values not aligned? You ever you ever had a car? If you if you have if you own a car, have you ever seen a car when it's out of alignment? What does it do when you let go of the wheel? The first thing it does is it veers, left or right. It just veers, and that's what happens when we don't assess the areas in our lives that we need to work on those values. The areas where we're not, we actively are not living the values that we speak of. Don't be ashamed of them. Don't hide them. Bring them to the light. You're human just like the rest of us, so you're going to get it wrong. But the worst thing you can do when you get it wrong is to ignore that area. Going back to the car analogy, it's like when, you're, when your oil change light or your gas light comes on, the worst thing you can do is ignore it. Because if you do, you'll be stranded or without that valuable tool. And the same is true in our lives. When we ignore the areas of our lives where we're not living up to our values, we are allowing, we are, what's the word I'm looking for? The negligence. We are allowing something to be destroyed or we are allowing ourselves to veer off and be stranded in life. And that's where we can begin to lose hope. We can begin to lose our future. All from not analyzing where your life is not adding up in the values. All right. So number four, that was number three. Number four is how can you start to make changes so that your actions reflect your values more clearly and more closely? What can you do? What what network do you need to be a part of? What example do you need to uh, link up with that maybe can show you or walk you through beyond where you are now? Maybe you don't even know how to follow through on some of those values. I had to learn. I had to, I had to get around when it comes to certain areas of being a man. I had to get around good men, men who had high value or, or carried themselves with high value. And I had to learn. Who, who are the, how can you get closer and make progress on these areas? And that first thing that comes to mind is that network because that, that will accelerate you. So that's number four. And I love number five. Number five is what would happen if you started to live more consciously in accordance with your values? And here's why this one is is so important. Because I can tell you what would happen. What will happen is your life will become less susceptible to the lies and deception. There are so many people because they don't have values. Their life is just flowing it's back and forth, wherever the wind blows. If somebody calls them on the phone and says, hey, can we count on you to vote for this party? That party could be the worst, have the worst plan for their lives. And they, don't, they would vote for it because they don't stand for anything. And there's so many people walking around today just following the voice of, of the invisible mob. Not taking a moment, taking a step back to say, hey, how does this align with my values? What are my values? And that's the importance of standing for something. Because if you don't stand for something, you open up your life to lies and deception. And when your, li when your life is under lies and deception, what begins to happen is your life gets darker and darker and darker. Your ways become more destructive and more toxic because it's not connected to life-giving values. And I'm not here, I, I, today's objective is not to, you know, condemn you or harp on you, but I want to encourage you because if you're going to be, if you're going to reach the success that you were created for or become the success you were created to become, we have to have values. We have to stand strong even in spite of opposition. And there will be some opposition. Because there will be people that will try to move you from your values. But I wanted to encourage you today and, and this time in particularly, where there's a lot of people trying to influence you to do a lot of things and calling your phone like they're calling my phone, I encourage you to do that alignment. Look at your values and filter everything through that. And if you do that, you will continue on this road of becoming the success you were created to be. All right. That's all my time for this week. As you can see, we got in a little late or early this week, actually. So just be on the lookout. There's a lot going on, but we're going to keep dropping these because we believe, I believe that you were created to reach the success 
that your life was fashioned for, all right? So till next week, remember this, success is your destiny. And I'll see you on the next one.